Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll be looking at the hard floor and carpet cleaning performance of the DJI Romo. I tested the S version, which only comes with full rubber brushes. There are also additional brushes available that include bristles and have slightly softer fins. I'll be testing those separately in another dedicated review video. As mentioned, this test was conducted with the standard full rubber brushes. Let's get started with my hard floor test. For this test, I use certified test dust. This dust simulates typical household dust and is also used in various testing standards. I applied 0.45 grams of it to my test surface. The test surface is laminate. This laminate has a slightly textured surface, meaning there are some grooves, and of course we also have the joints between the individual laminate panels. I then let the robots run over the surface eight times, initially in pure suction mode. These runs are of course carried out with the maximum suction level and in the two-pass cleaning mode, if the robot supports that. I then use a microfiber cloth to check the surface and joints for how much dust is left behind. In the case of the DJI Romo, you can already see from the images alone that the result is not particularly good. That's why I'm only doing spot checks here and we can see that quite a lot of dust remains. We know this from other devices as well, which simply cannot clean the surface properly using suction alone, not to mention the joints. Here's a small selection. No matter whether it's the Muva Z60 or other combo devices, they fail miserably here and really don't do a good job in removing this small amount of dust. This is a level of dirt you can remove with two to four passes of a cordless vacuum and there are pure suction robots like the Dyson Vis Nav that remove this effortlessly, leaving both the surface and the joints between the panels absolutely dust free in this test. With combo devices, I of course repeat the test again using the mopping function. That means, as described before, eight passes in suction mode, followed by an additional two mopping passes with the appropriate water setting for laminate, which is usually the medium level. At that point, both the surface and the joints should be completely dust free. That's my expectation, that any remaining dust residue is fully removed using the mopping function. Unfortunately, that's not the case with the DJI Romo. As we can see, the surface is dust free, but the joints are not. This is typical for combo devices. Other devices also fail this test, such as the Mova Z60 or the Ecovax X9. You can find corresponding tests on my channel. The only two combo devices that managed to clean everything properly with the mopping function, including the joints, were the iRobot Roomba 705 combo and the iRobot Roomba 205 combo, which succeeded thanks to their Y-pattern cleaning motion. This once again shows that the pure mopping technology is sometimes less important than the actual mopping technique. And as mentioned before, you don't even necessarily need a mopping function at all to remove this kind of dirt as the Dyson Vis Nav shows. Let's take a look at the carpet cleaning performance. Here as well, I'm testing with certified test dust, which again simulates household dust. However, this one is slightly coarser than the test dust I use for the hard floor test. I'm testing three types of carpets with different pile types. For the red and dark blue carpets, I only use the certified test dust. For the short pile doormat, I additionally use bird sand applied in a specific spot. I then measure the dust or dirt pickup after 14 passes for the first mentioned carpets and 7 passes for the short pile doormat. The robots are always allowed to run at the highest possible suction level, of course with carpet boost enabled, since that can sometimes make a difference. The robots generally use the checkerboard cleaning pattern here, except for the red carpet that has a pile orientation and is only cleaned in horizontal lines. If the robot offers the option to adjust the overlap, I always use the setting with the greatest overlap between the cleaning paths. The results are as follows. Out of 10 grams of bird sand that were applied in specific spots on the doormat, the DJI Romo S, with its purely rubber brushes, is able to suck up 84% after 7 passes, that is 8.4 grams. For the test dust collection on this carpet, it only manages 44% of the 5 grams of test dust applied, meaning it picked up 2.2 grams after 7 cleaning passes. The achieved 60% dirt pickup on my dark blue carpet with very soft pile and a pile height of 2 centimeters looks a bit better. 
That corresponds to 6 grams collected after 14 passes, since a total of 10 grams of test dust was applied there. On the red carpet, however, things look worse again with only 34% dirt pickup. That corresponds to 3.4 grams collected out of the 10 grams of test dust applied. This carpet is more difficult to clean because it has a very dense pile, again with a pile height of about 2 centimeters. Anyone who already knows my channel knows that these results are not particularly good. I'll compare them directly with my current top 7 for each carpet. The result of the DJI Romo is always marked in red, while the current top 3 are marked in green. And here we can see that, on the dark blue carpet, with the very soft pile, the robot, with its 60%, doesn't make it into the top 7 and is still far from getting anywhere near the current top 3. With the bird sand pickup on my very short pile carpet or the doormat, things don't look particularly good with 84%. The robot doesn't make it into the top 7 there either. In this type of dirt scenario and this test, well-performing robots usually achieve over 90% as we can also see in the list. The exception is the 100% that some robots achieve, but generally 90% and above is not a problem for many robots. With the test dust pickup on this carpet, at 44% you are miles away from even coming close to the top 7. In this category, there are robots that can remove more than 80% or even 100%. And as you can see, there is a wide variety of vacuum robots represented here across all price ranges. Even though the result on the red carpet with the very dense pile isn't enough for the top 7, it's still not all that bad. It's right on the verge of the top 7, although of course it's still miles away from anything close to the top 3. But at least the overall level isn't too bad, and it actually beats some flagship robots from other manufacturers that don't even appear in these rankings because they perform so poorly. I'll come back to those for a brief comparison in a moment. First, I'll show you a complete overview compared to Roborock. We already saw in the top 7 lists that there's not much from Roborock in there, sometimes the S7 and sometimes the Q10 S5, but otherwise most Roborock models perform pretty poorly and are simply totally overhyped. And now we can see in this overview that the DJI Romo, even with just this rubber brush, actually performs better than some Roborock devices. I'll briefly display the overview here. You can pause it if you want to take a closer look. Same overview for the Dream and Mova devices I've tested so far. That also includes the latest models from Mova, namely the Z60 and Z50. And that produces a very interesting picture. You can clearly see that the DJI Romo really outperforms the Mova devices on carpets where suction and airflow plays a bigger role. But interestingly, on this short pile carpet, the Duo Divide brushes, or rather the entire cleaning head, are actually a major disadvantage. You can see the same pattern in other results from devices that use a similar cleaning head. As I said, I'll take another look at this with the bristle version of the Duo Divide brushes, but I suspect there still won't be a huge improvement on the dirt mat, certainly not as big as one might hope. Yes, overall it has to be said that the results shown here are unfortunately disappointing and we have another sweeping machine with a mediocre mopping system attached. Especially when you take another look at the manufacturer's specifications. We're talking about 25,000 Pascal and an airflow of 20 liters per second, which corresponds to roughly 42 CFM. Of course, all of this comes with the usual disclaimers measured under laboratory conditions and so on. Hopefully everyone is aware by now that these figures have little to do with what actually is going on at the cleaning head and that they are typically measured directly at the motor. I didn't carry out any measurements myself here, simply because the results were already too poor and for me the decisive factor is what the robot actually delivers in my testing. I will however take another look at it with the other brushes, which according to DJI are supposed to be better suited for carpets. The robot comes standard with these full rubber brushes and this is its out of the box performance. So that's it from me regarding this robot and its cleaning performance. If you'd like to support my testing, you'll find options linked in the description or displayed at the end of the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.